First, I will reform our special interest written policy. When I am president, I will start by closing the revolving door in the White House. I will make it absolutely clear that working in an Obama administration is not about serving your former employer or your future employer. When you walk into my administration, you will not be able to work on regulations or contracts directly related to your former employer for two years. Stricter limits than under any uh, under any other administration in history. Less than two weeks later, Obama has made at least three high-profile exceptions to his own ethics policy. Service Employees International Union President Andy Stern directed more forced dues into Democrat politics than any other big labor union boss. Just from their disclosure reports, it's clear they spent at least $200 million on politics and lobbying in 2008. All of it went for Democrats. Of course, President Barack Obama, following what is now a clear pattern, is repaying the big labor bosses big time. SEIU gets another payoff with the nomination of Union Associate General Counsel John J. Sullivan to the Federal Election Commission. SEIU lawyer Sullivan's nomination fails any kind of reasonable smell test. Sullivan was directly involved in the SEIU George Soros funded America Coming Together PAC and 527 committees. Thanks in part to a complaint filed by the National Right to Work Legal Defense Foundation, the Federal Election Commission began an investigation into the SEIU Soros outfit that resulted in the largest recent fine by the FEC, three quarters of a million dollars. As one of SEIU's attorneys representing the union in the matter, Sullivan was involved in the largest rule breaking ever at the FEC, and now he's being appointed as one of the commissioners. That would be laughable were it not happening right now. And Sullivan's connection to other questionable campaign finance schemes are not limited to American Coming Together and the SEIU. Sullivan was also part of a Teamster scandal that led to federal oversight of a Teamster's election. You might remember this campaign money laundering scheme that involved Democratic National Committee Chairman Terry McAuliffe, Teamster President Ron Kerry, and President Bill Clinton, among others. The New York Times reported that McAuliffe urged fundraisers to find a rich Democrat to donate to Ron Kerry's 1996 re-election campaign. Reportedly, McAuliffe said that if a Democrat donor made a large contribution to the Kerry campaign, then the Teamsters would in turn contribute at least one half a million dollars to various Democratic Party committees. Was Teamster lawyer Sullivan aware of these conversations? How many conversations like this took place between McAuliffe and Sullivan? We will likely never know. United States Representative Peter Hoekstra's Oversight Committee investigating the Teamster election corruption released a memo written to Ron Kerry that stated, quote, Judy Scott and John Sullivan were constant campaigners and supporters of his during his re-election campaign. A Teamster local union official testified to the same committee regarding the memo. Quote, this document is a description of the full-time paid staff of the Teamsters being converted into a full-time union political operatives during the 1996 campaign. This document is an admission that the international representatives, government affairs operatives, organizers, and field service staff, and even the IBT's lawyers were campaigning nearly all the time while on union paid time, close quote. The Teamster union official continued, quote, almost the entire building was converted into a campaign apparatus. All of these persons have full-time jobs at the IBT. All of these persons were paid by the IBT to campaign full-time for the Ron Kerry slate, and all of it's illegal, and it was funded by theft and the maintenance of deceitful accounting of union dues." Close quote. Sullivan's involvement with the law-breaking of America coming together, SEIU's massive political operation, and his involvement with the Teamsters Ron Kerry campaign make his nomination preposterous. As always, visit the National Right to Work Committee's website, nrtwc.org, for a copy of John J. Sullivan's alert. Download the alert and share it. With this appointment, combined with so many other big labor paybacks, including taxpayer-funded bailout of the United Auto Workers Union, a presidential order establishing forced unionism on federal construction projects through project labor agreements, a dramatic expansion of the Department of Labor's wage and hour division targeting employers for harassment, and strong support for the card check forced unionism legislation that will force workers to be represented by a union without a vote, the Obama administration is creating an activist government run by empowered big labor bosses and fueled by forced unionism. Before individual worker rights are completely eroded by this president and Congress, you must act.
contact the National Right to Work Committee for information to help us fight back against the damage forced unionism is having on our country.